Hello, in this episode, we'll discuss how to use VAE to detect credit card fraud. So again, the credit card fraud is to train user model, the VAE in this case, using just the normal transactions. So it will predict how normal transactions will look like. And then you're using a test data, uh, compare the actual transaction characteristics with the reconstructed. And if the difference is very large, then it's an anomaly, namely a fraud, isn't it? So what we did before is similar to the autoencoder, um, but here we have actually a variational autoencoder, okay? And which is the, the encoder sends to mu and z a distribution, and then we sample a z that we send to decoder to reconstruct the image. But then the idea is the same, original data, and then a normal transaction trained reconstructed data, if the difference is large, it's likely to be a fraudulent transaction. Okay. So let's see how that um, is implemented. So the beginning part is very similar to the autoencoder fraud detection. So we first load the library and we will use mostly the TensorFlow Keras for building the neural network, like the variation of autoencoder, set some parameters and load the data. We have to mount first the Google Drive, map it on our computer. Uh, then the data is already uploaded on Google Drive um, because the size is large, uploading on Google Drive and reading the program from the Google Drive is faster. And then we read in the credit card data which we call DF. Okay. And then we have done it before, so it's the same and be quick, but the time we drop it because it's irrelevant, we split the train and test data. The training data uses only class zero, the normal transactions for its training. We drop the class variable, which we are not going to use for training. Um, in the test data, we want to know what the true label was. The class is saved in the Y test and X test uh, drops that class variable. We standardize using the training data, mean and standard deviation, and, and scale it the train and test data uh, and convert to NumPy. Okay. So you can check again how it looks like. Seems mean zero and standard deviation one. Now it's the um, new part that the variational autoencoder, and uh, we have the neural network similar to previously. Um, Intermediate dimension, there are two intermediate layers, 20 node and 10 node. And here's the sampling function that we covered in the variational autoencoder. The input has the well, original dimension, 29 node to 20 node to 10 node. And then um, the mean and low variance of latent, latent is uh, space is five, okay? But it gives a five of mean and five of low variance. From that, we sample a Z of five Zs, okay? So the uh, triplet is coming out, the Z mean Z log five and Z from the encoder. Okay. And then the decoder is pretty much looking like an order encoder. It takes the latent dimension and blows it up to 10 node, 20 node, and then the original 29 node. That's our decoder. And our variational autoencoder. Variational encoder is basically taking the encoders, uh, the third output, number two, the Z, send it to the decoder to recreate a VAE image. Okay. And the VAE loss, again, is the, not just the entropy binary cross entropy loss, but also um, includes the KL loss. Um, so the total with the customized VAE loss. Uh, we train um, the network. Uh, Uh, we didn't compile it, sorry. We need to compile and then train it, isn't it? And then um, it's gonna take a while. So let's come back when it's done training. Okay, it's done training. So let's see the reconstruction error, the VAE predict of X test and then compute the mean square error of between X test and prediction. If you look at the summary statistics, the mean of the normal transactions are 0.56, but the mean of 
fraudulent at 24, so markedly large. Um, so let's do a post analysis of the scatter plot we did before. And we can put a different threshold, uh, but for threshold of 0.9, the confusion matrix gives you here a number. Um, you can also do an ROC curve analysis as we did before. And you can see that the VAE characteristics looks pretty uh, decent relative to the non-informative 45 degree line. So this concludes how to use VAE for credit card fraud detection. Thank you for watching this episode.